Okay, hi Jordan. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Happy birthday. Good. <laughs> Listen, um, thank you so much for doing this interview. I'd just like to um, ask you um, about, obviously, Konstantinos uh, Eric Scurfield, who's the first UK YPG international volunteer who has... Uh, um, fallen in the in the battle against ISIS in in Rojava. Um, if you could um, tell us how your relationship with him, how he was as a person, and any circumstances regarding his martyrdom. After last year, a guy he uh, came right off of the British uh, Royal Marines to come here because uh, British Royal Marines were not going to deploy to this area. So, due to the fact that uh, ISIS was martyring or killing innocent people left and right, Christians, Yazidis, anyone that didn't follow their own beliefs, uh, he couldn't live with that. Um, he was a devout Christian, so he decided that he wanted to come here to do something about it. Um, from day one, he never complained and he always volunteered for everything he could do, every single ambush, every single guard duty, he did really crappy jobs, he volunteered for everything just to be a part of it. Um, I met him the first day when he got to his unit, um, when he first arrived here last November. And then, um, again, we fought through Shangal, we were in uh, Jezza together, and uh, I was with him up until uh, he was killed in uh, Tel Barak. He was in uh, APC, we were assaulting a position in Tel Barak as we were advancing, and uh, he was hit by an anti tank weapon. I'm so sorry uh, for. I'm really very sorry for your loss and condolences to you and and all of your comrades. Um, I have been in contact with the family. Um, do you have any message for Konstantinos's family, Jordan? I just want to thank you for uh, creating a wonderful son um, and how you raised him. The man that came here was, a, like I said, a very devout man to God, and he had very uh, hardline scruples. He wouldn't let something like this go on. He decided to do something, and he paid his life for it. So I'm honored to know him, and I fought by his side. Thank you very much. And what about the process of the repatriation? There seems to be a little bit of a hold-up. Can you give us any updates on that? Uh, the British government doesn't want to get involved because this was dropped to the media before it was brought to them, so they've washed their hands of it. So now it's going to fall on the uh, family and uh, YPG to work together to get his, his uh, body repatriated to the United Kingdom and get it by Iraq so it can be flown to the UK. It's extraordinary, isn't it, that um, somebody, you know, the world is talking about the global threat of ISIS and uh, yet this sort of attitude from the UK government is, is difficult to understand. Uh, they operate in their own way, um, own system. Sorry, the, the sound is going. Sound is going, Jordan. No, the sound. Your sound is sound is gone. Very very. If you speak up a little bit, it might help. Question again. Uh, it's it's difficult to understand how everyone is talking about the global threat of ISIS and how the threat to Europe and the threat to the UK, etc. And yet here is somebody who has given their life, a UK ex Royal Marine who has given his life fighting against these people, and yet there seems to be a little bit of a ha well to put it to put it mildly, a bit of a hands-off approach from the UK government in bringing his body back to his mother? Uh, the way I look at it is uh, the major powers didn't want their own citizens coming here because it makes them look bad when their own citizens die fighting something they should be fighting. They don't want to get involved in this war by putting troops in the ground because they already pulled out of Iraq. So there's a lot of war weariness going on with uh, major governments and due to uh, people wanting to stay elected in power, uh, they don't want to get re-involved because it may hurt their approval rating. Okay, thank you, Jordan. And what about, um, can you tell us about how the general um, operations are going generally against ISIS in Rojava? Right now, things are really good. Like I said, uh, especially where uh, 
my friend Paul or Costa was killed, we've taken a lot of ground from ISIS. We severed their ties to Iraq and Syria and northern Syria, so they have no, no more northern route to Mosul. They cannot go from Iraq route to Mosul anymore. Um, it's very hard to get logistics across uh, to into Iraq from uh, Syria now because of the land that we've taken in the northern region in the last two weeks. So things are actually going very well right now, and we're continuing to push southwards. Jordan Matson, um, thank you ever so much. You know you have supporters all over the world, and you have the moral high ground, and you, you know, people all over the world who you know are abhorrent about the ideas of ISIS. You know, um, you are a hero to them. You, you, the Kurds who are fighting ISIS, the people who have fallen will never, ever, ever be forgotten. And it's a great honor to speak to you today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jordan. Okay, I'll just turn this...